for lists that would make sense based on that. Uh, one thing that I think is key, uh, which I kind of realized as I try to work through this, is, and I think some of the, you know, the, the discussion seem to inch on one key aspect, which is whether the exit criteria are really about the project as an organizational structure or the project as like, you know, a product, some code that's actually running. And uh, I think, in fact, we didn't really highlight that there was a difference in those two aspects. And, and uh, I think some of the discussion really came from, you know, talking about one or the other. And um, I think we have to agree on which one we're talking about. So in my, in this case, in the exa in the draft that I put together, I, I really focused on the former, which is the the more of the organizational aspect of the project, with the idea that you know the project life cycle is about this: you go first in incubation mode, and you say, "Hey, I have an idea, I have a proposal, I want to start to investigating," and then. The maturation level is when you actually manage to put to get the project off the ground. You have, you know, generally speaking, like a, a, a you know a decent community around it. There's people, uh, you know, participating, not just all from one uh, entity, and um, and you got your act together, in so to speak, right? And so you have code that's being developed and. Uh, you have things like you know test and and uh, uh, continuous integration. All this stuff has been kind of figured out, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the product itself is is ready for shipping for like general availability. But it means that okay, now you have a project that's you know uh, that's mature. It's functioning as an organization, and so this is really what I focus on. Uh, I think if you look at the exit criteria that I put together, some of them, you know, may actually belong more the other category. And what I also realized that I think is important to highlight is the fact that it's it's not like we're going to be able to come up with a list of very precise exit criteria that will be applicable broadly on all projects. And there are certain things like, you know, when we talk about scalability, I only listed a few there. It's clear that there are quite a, f you know, quite many dimensions to scalability, and based on, you know, you, the particular requirements or use cases that a project may want to address, they may, some may more be more important than others. And so this is a key, you know, this is an example in which, you know, it shows that one size does not fit all. And so I drafted the document more with that in mind, in thinking, okay. This is the kind of things that people need to think about when they are evaluating whether the project has reached maturation or not. Uh, and so the, from a process point of view, the TSC is responsible for assessing whether a project deserves to be moved to maturation stage. And so I thought about the exit criteria as being more like, you know, somewhat of a template for 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 project to consider when they want to fill out their application so to speak to the TSC and say hey we think we fit the the, the requirements to be to become a mature project or considered as such so you know I'm not going to go into the detail of every one of the exit criteria that I, I, I picked you know through the the notes that have been taken but I think this gives you kind of like my uh, my thinking into you know how I put this document together. There were several comments. I you know it wasn't completely clear to me how some of those comments could be integrated into the document, and so maybe we do still need a little bit more discussion as to what we are trying to achieve. Whether, as I said, I made several assumptions, and this if people you know agree with that, if that. You know, I, I felt like, well, people are not trashing it, which is probably a good sign. It means people are saying, yeah, okay, that may that makes sense. But I think it would be important to validate that with everybody, whether those assumptions are, are good and uh, whether there is something else that needs to be done. Once we agree on the assumptions, then we can further fine tune the details of the document. Okay. Thanks, Arnaud.
Um, so I, I think I pretty, I pretty much agree with a lot of that. Maybe we do need to sort of carve out and articulate that, you know, the sort of the two levels that we're talking about, because it's actually going to be, you know, a, you know, is Sawtooth Lake or is the Hyperledger Fabric Project, those incubations are the top levels, if you will, are they ready to exit incubation versus, you know, we've had a number of subordinate proposals like the busy work stuff from Bishop and uh, we have one that we're going to be considering next week from Greg on the chain tool that are sort of subordinate projects, um, uh, if you will, and, and, and you know, that they, you know, may or may not be, you know, deemed, you know, ready, uh, or, 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 for instance, or the, uh, the, the DTCC uh, one, the, the, the shim for Java, you know, those may be deemed ready even before, you know, the fabric, um, uh, or, you know, in the case of Sawtooth Lake, um, is ready, and so we may want to exit those from incubation, but they're still part of a, a higher level incubator, if you will. Um, <clears throat> So maybe we do need to sort of call out the, diff the distinction between those. Any other thoughts on this, comments? Do people agree? Do, do we need more discussion? Um, I, I, this is Mike. I really like the, the document put together on and and you know we've had that discussion. I, you know, thank you very much for taking the uh, an initiative to do that. Um, one of the things that came out just in thinking about that is that maybe our project proposals need to do, um, when we present the proposal, would be the point at which we start articulating some of those criteria, some of the project-specific criteria. Um, so maybe beefing up, I think we had a section in the proposal that talks about, you know, when you're ready for maturation, and maybe we should start holding, um, and it's probably a good idea to go back for the earlier projects and actually describe and articulate what the per project criteria are for how we view um, maturation. And then that would give the TSC an opportunity to evaluate not just the project, but the project's notion and definition of maturity. And, and use this as a guideline for what should be included? Um, well, no, I'm talking about two, two set, there, there are well, two I, sets of criteria. I, I, yeah, right. I think there, I understand what you're saying. So you're saying, so we will go back and revisit the proposals for Sawtooth Lake and Fabric, for instance, and yeah, I think, update the, uh, I'm, I'm looking for the section here. Um, there, was a, there was a section, and sorry, I don't have it in front of me, but I recall a section that talked about uh, kind of some notion of when you're done. Right. Yeah, I think in yours you called it closure, and then I was looking in um, in the in the Sawtooth Lake one, and then in the fabric one it was called. Um, we didn't want that though. Yeah, so 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 you would have a section then that would sort of articulate. Um, what how how the project proposers. Yes. The, the definition of maturity, which which doesn't, I mean, like like Arno said, there are some like uh, community activity and engagement and other things like that, which are sort of universal. But each project's going to have some set of criteria as well around which it should be held accountable um, for its for its maturation. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, this yeah, and, is and I'm and I'm agreeing with you, and I'm just suggesting that we beef that section up. Um, hey, this is hard. I was also going to ask if we have some notion of sort of production ready, um, because it seems like the the project might be mature, but not you know ready to to run, uh, ready to use to move lots of money. For instance, you know we might still need to do like a security review or, or things like that. Do we yeah, have any so, notion of that, or do we need to do that, or? So, so Hart, I think I would agree with you, but I think again that's a slightly different conversation than whether or not it's incubating or not. Although I suppose you could conflate the two, um, uh, but uh, I would think that would be more along the lines of if you're doing some sort of steady release cadence that you can have, you know, effectively an LTS kind of release that we would you know, as, as the community, you know, the Hyperledger uh, project would anoint as being production ready. Um, I don't know that that's going to be the, it, I, I wouldn't expect 
first one out the door, I would expect that there would be a, a series and then we would get to a point where we would declare it as ready for production. You think about, for instance, what Docker did. You know, they had a number of dot releases before they released their 1.0 and declared that it was ready for, for prime time. Um, yeah, I agree with you on that, Chris. Um, I just think that uh, we, you know, as we're having the exit criteria discussion, we, you know, this might be the next discussion that we want to have um, is sort of the the steps sort of after the, the incubation and maturation. I guess uh, thinking about Norm's question, though, we should uh, probably you know, given the importance of security in this uh, in this space, uh, we should probably kind of maybe think through whether some uh, at least early uh, security related criteria should be added to this, right? Uh, do we want to think about security at a later stage or, you know, what amount of uh, uh, um, security strength should be part of this, uh, uh, this stage, this criteria is probably worth talking about. Um, so Ram, I think, uh, I mean, I, I think it's important to do that, but I think, you know, to mix point, maybe that's something that should be specific to the, the top of the project to describe, because they may be different, right? Criteria may be different. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they will be, but I, su I suspect that there's, there's likelihood that there may be varying degrees of, uh, you know, if you, if you've got, you know, if you've got something that you're building that's permissionless, it needs to be, you know, the, 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 the blockchain itself, the, you know, that needs to be hardened and secure, but anybody can join. So, right, um, it's a different function of security, I think. Right. Perhaps some high level, um, you know, description of what, you know, what, what is our notion? I mean, do we, do we kind of, uh, think that some level of hardening or security design is incorporated in the project at this stage? Is that something that we want to encourage people to uh, to think through before it becomes a mature project? Is, you know, oh. I'm just raising it. I'm, I'm yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think that it's something that has to be top of mind. But I, right. uh, again, I think that, um, you know, and, and I think Certainly, where I think Mick, where you were suggesting is that as part of the proposal, and we can go back and we can revisit the ones that we've been, you know, that have been submitted, is to have an explicit description that would be part of what we review and approve, that would describe essentially when the team that's making the proposal would feel that they they thought they were done. Um, now the other aspect of the whole life cycle was basically also that the project team would decide when they thought they were ready and it's not like something the TSC is going to be constantly monitoring a project but it's more like the, pro the project team would come forward and they'd say here's why we think we're ready to exit incubation. Um, but um, I could certainly see you know augmenting the, the proposal template itself you know, with a set of questions to ask and then, um, you know, use this as a rough, you know, guide for some of the more generic kinds of things we'd be looking for um, and have those two sort of synthesized and then the, the TSC would use that as a measure. Is that, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, listening, li listening about the security talk there, I mean, I realized security, I think, is only touched into the test coverage. Maybe we should have something about, you know, <laughs> uh, along the lines. It may be a bit silly because you would expect everybody to do that, but maybe we can highlight that people must have given security proper consideration and maybe have gone through or have plans to go through security review, something along those lines, I don't know. Maybe some kind of peer review from a participant that's outside of the proposal. An interesting idea.
I'd hate to create another subcommittee here, but uh, could you <laughs> have another pair of eyes who hasn't um, made assumptions about the code as it's been developed? Well, I mean, if we want to use these sorts of systems to move large amounts of money, we're going to have to have really, really thorough uh, crypto insecurity reviews. Uh, because obviously any sort of bugs or any sort of problems could be catastrophic. Uh, now that's probably a little ways down the road, but it, it's definitely something to, to think about. But again, I think though that that's not a function of Exiting from incubation to maturity, that would be a function of any release that we declared that we were going to be supporting for a long term period, wouldn't it? So, what about this then? And, and again, coming back on keying in on your, your comment, Chris, that, that there's a difference between maturity and sort of production, that at the end of maturity, you better have a, an evaluation plan. One of the criteria is do you have a security evaluation plan in place? Um, and then the the execution of that plan is what gets you out of the, the, the you know the rubber stamp for production quality. Would that make sense? Uh, yes. Yeah. I I think I agree with Mick. That seems really reasonable, and it also allows uh, individual proposals to have sort of individual security levels. Obviously, if you're just writing a proposal for testing software, you know you probably don't really need to care as much about security as if you're writing some sort of core code. Uh, so I, I think this dovetails really nicely with Mick's suggestion for uh, modifying the proposals uh, to to have sort of individual criteria. Yeah, I, I I agree with that actually. I think that's a reasonable idea. It's like since we have this variability, we are, seem to all agree we have to live with. Maybe you know, and maybe there will be some changes down the line. But you know, at least setting some expectations at the time of the proposal makes sense to me. Richard, you've been quiet. Thoughts? Yeah, sorry about that, Chris. I was distracted by being dragged into another meeting, so I actually missed some of this discussion, so I don't actually have anything to contribute. I'm pretty sorry. Okay. Pardon? And he's distracted, too. Who else we got? Haven't heard from. Apart from uh, Chris Allen is missing. Uh, Tomas, you've been quiet. Well, I like the document as it is. Uh, I think it would be hard or a bit premature to set very specific parameters and criteria. Um, yeah, that's my opinion. And um, uh, Stan, you've been quiet as well. Thoughts? Well, uh, I actually agree with, uh, with uh, Mac and uh, Vipin that it would be great to have a set of criteria per project. I mean, the the document could be uh, more of a, like a guideline, so like what would be the type of things that would be expected to be included in the proposal for the maturation. And uh, maybe there could also be like a really small high level uh, set that all projects are expected to match. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, that's a, if I may interject, th this actually brings up an interesting point, which is I <clears> think <throat> one thing we could consider doing is in that list, I think there are certain criteria that are probably applicable to all projects, and then there are some that are not so. And we could highlight those. I don't know if there's much value in that, but and, uh, that might be something worth doing. I think Mick brought that up in one of his comments. 
David, you've been quiet. Um, yeah, I, 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 I like the idea of having a you know set of questions and um, associated with uh, you know the different uh, pieces that, as uh, I think uh, Mick and and Hart were discussing. Um, you know, one one interesting thing is and so with my white paper working group hat on. So you know we're it, of course it's still a draft and we still are are looking to get more feedback and all that, but something around, you know, how well does uh, the platform uh, meet the, you know, sort of vision and, and criteria of what the overall program is as well. I mean, you may have, um, and that does a couple things really well, but if it's missing a key aspect of a fundamental concept that is being outlined in our overall vision of what this project should be, you know, that, that would be that would be important to highlight, and 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 the point about you know when when the project sponsor is 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 ready to say hey you know I want I would like to see my uh, project move to the to the next stage, and and they they make that sort of proposal and talk through it, um, you know to be able to to speak to how it how it fits in with their overall vision and and everything you know and also in terms of uh, Again, if, if we if, if we had specific questions that were asked about how well uh, the the project has uh, achieved, you know, the various maturity levels uh, that we put in the form. Thanks, Ashima san You're on. Do you have any thoughts? Uh, I I agree the uh, the idea to have the criteria to uh, evaluate. Uh, uh, it's uh, I think it's strongly depending on the use cases, but the um, we should have some guidelines or yeah. so. Uh, basically, I agree. Okay, thank you. Um. All right, so I guess we have a little bit of work to do then to um, refine this and also to sort of update the um, the template. Um, Arno, are you willing to sort of take this morning's discussion and integrate that and come back next week? Uh, I, can I can try, but I'm not completely sure how to go at this because so how we, you know, I again, it's not because I disagree. I agree with the idea. It's just that in the end, what are we going to have? Do we have? I mean, we do. We, are we going to keep two documents? One which specifically is focused on exit criteria, and then we basically have a reference from the proposal template to the exit criteria, saying you need to consider those. I, I don't. Or do we create? Or do we integrate this into the template? Yeah, I would suggest that we integrate it into the template and give examples of what we would expect people to come forward with. And that the examples can be our sort of general guidance and then, pardon me, um, we can, and, and they, again, as people present proposals, um, they, can, they can fill out the, the criteria for when they think they would be done. Does that make sense? Okay, somebody else wanted to speak when I started. So. Yeah, yeah, hey, this is Morali from <clears throat> DDCC. Uh, one thought, right? I think last time when we talked, we talked about having a test network. I thought that was a good idea to have a test network as a you know part of criteria for the maturity. Okay, so but that would be for a, sort of a top level. Project not for a subordinate thing, but I, I I do agree that that's a good idea. Okay. Okay. All right. That's um. I think I think that was a good discussion. So thanks everyone. Uh, moving on to the remainder of our discussion. So um, I think the the thinking for next week is to have the virtual hackathon where. We're going to try and sort of have people online for most of the day and um, 
and there was a draft uh, circulated by Todd uh, of a draft agenda, and I had that bookmarked here someplace. Yeah, I just dropped that into the chat window for everyone. I did. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. So, Todd, you want to want to walk through it since you did the work of pulling it together? Thank you. Yeah, this is just a, a quick basic framework. Uh, it seemed like everyone's availability was uh, for next week. Um, so, looking at kicking this off on Wednesday and running through midday Friday. And I think the idea is people just had a little more general availability to be working on code, having discussions, etc. Uh, and one of the suggestions was made to have a couple of checkpoints uh, throughout those days. So the thought was to get this kicked off uh, on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time, do an hour welcome to set the stage with what some of the goals are for the next couple of days, uh, and then move into a virtual hackathon where people use a variety of the existing tools we have in place. Uh, from there, uh, at the end of that day, there'll be a quick check-in on uh, what, what took place, during the course of the day, what people want to accomplish in the coming day, and then people can continue to hack into that night in, in other time zones. Uh, Thursday uh, is the standing TSC call, so we can use that for any TSC matters as well as set the stage for day two. Uh, and then again, at the end of that day, have a 30-minute check-in uh, on what progressed during that day. And then on Friday, again, have a final regroup and recap uh, for what took place. So a couple of things that we want to iron out are, uh, one, we have a lot of great existing tools in place, but just want to check in if there's anything else that uh, people want to use during those days. And then two, we want to set some objectives for what people are looking to accomplish during that time. And then lastly, there was a suggestion uh, for you know some other ad hoc meetings that take place during that time. Uh, potentially having office hours for their maintainers, uh, as well as possibly having uh, some work group meetings during that time. And we're happy to get those scheduled so people know when they're happening. That's just a, a quick overview and then really looking for the TSC and the community to help build this out a little bit more uh, in preparation for next week. <clears throat> so thanks, Todd. I think this is, this is a good start. Unfortunately, I can't do the 10 a.m. on Wednesday because I have a customer briefing. Um, um, I'm visiting a customer, so I won't be able to do the 10 a.m. I can't do the TSC on, on Thursday. That's not a problem, but uh, I won't be around to kick it off. But um, maybe we get a volunteer to sort of just lead the discussion. I would expect that, um, you know, again, what – so this will be – I think the intention, again, for this virtual hackathon is to be a lot more hands-on, actually get people writing code, you know, whether it's, um, you know, fixing bugs, finding bugs that have, you know, they're low-hanging fruit or adding new features or adding tests or just writing uh, examples uh, and, 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 and driving and testing and, and coming, coming up with more bugs um, or, you know, augmenting the documentation. Any any of those types of activities that sort of hands on keyboard where, you know, conversation in Slack is, is going to be, you know, able to sort of um, uh, help move people along uh, quickly where you could pick up the phone or get on a Google Hangout and, uh, or use Screen Hero to do some pairing. Um, you know, I think the intention would really be to focus on actually moving uh, each of these uh, sort of two top level projects forward in some shape or form. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, so I think, you know, the Thursday, you know, kickoff is really more of a coordination and, um, and you know, people can talk about, you know, what, what things they may or may not want to work on. And, uh, and, and then maybe there's some people that are uh, available to sort of say, hey, I can help you with that, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, to have people on and, and, you know, potentially have project office hours, uh, I think would be useful discussions for that first initial call. But like I said, unfortunately, I can't, I can't do that. I have a previous commitment. Um, Dan or, or Mick, are you guys um, hopefully going to you know, to participate and have some things that can be worked or 
um, you know, have some of the some of the Sawtooth Lake guys online at the time of the hackathon. I hope. Yeah, we're planning to have some participation there. Uh, we've been uh, talking about uh, some of the the work we've done to create a tutorial for the transaction families. I think that mm -hmm. might be able to be extended into some fun hackathon projects. Um, Perhaps something a little bit more formal put together for next week, but uh, in a nutshell, it's uh, it's different kind of games that that uh, people could probably gin up without a whole lot of uh, without a whole lot of time commitment. Okay, cool. And I'm planning to participate Thursday and Friday, but uh, I'm traveling Wednesday. Um, were there any plans for work group meetings to be held um, during the hackathon? I think that's a good suggestion. We should take that on. <laughs> so I know that I, mean, I, I think you know, it's up to you. I mean, if, if groups have already met, you know, during the week and they feel they've accomplished what they need to accomplish, that's you know, that's fine. If if teams want to sort of have an opportunity to do an off cycle. Uh, discussion. I think that that might be healthy as well. Um, I, I know the identity work group is has their standing meeting on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern, so we'll get that uh, yeah. spotted in there right now. Yeah, and the white the white paper meeting is uh, Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern, so that makes sense. Cool. So yeah, maybe we could get reminders, and if people wanted to dial in for that, they could do that as well. Um, in terms of the virtual hackathon, what are the times going to be? Is like Eastern eight to five or nine to how? Oh, how is time? Well, I think that uh, what proposing it would be sort of from ten. Eastern, which is 7 a.m. <clears throat> Sorry about that, West Coast guys. Uh, 7 a.m. Uh, West Coast, of course, it would be in some ridiculous time uh, if you're in Japan or China or elsewhere, uh, unfortunately. But um, um, so we would we would sort of have it, you know, between 10 and, and 6, it sounds like, with a little wrap-up at the end of the day at, uh, you know, 3 Pacific, 6, 6 Eastern. Okay, thanks. And I think people can continue hey, uh, past six PM. Um, I think that'll just be a checkpoint towards the end of the end of the day Eastern time. But I suspect people on the West Coast and in Asia will will continue on from there. Yeah, I mean, if, if 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 the current practice is any, I think you know there are definitely people that are still hanging around on uh, on Slack uh, past that time anyway. Um, okay. Uh, Hi. Uh this yes. is Kishore from Broadridge, uh, India, Broadridge, India. Uh, quick question for the hackathon. Uh, is there any plan to have a common sandbox environment uh, for people to do work, or people just do their work on their infrastructure and submit what they've done? H how do we plan to do that? I, I think it would be the normal process of you, you work on your laptop or in your own development environment, you know, using uh, certainly for the fabric, you know, we've got a vagrant environment that you can stand up, and I and, and it's the same for uh, the Sawtooth Lake. There's sort of um, development sandboxes that you can set up, and you would do your work. And if you make any code changes or whatever, or what have you, um, uh, you would do that there, and then you know submit a pull request to get any changes uh, merged, or you know new tests or fixes, whatever. Um, and uh, of course, if you're writing. Uh, sample code, then um, I think, you know, sharing in your personal GitHub uh, mm -hmm. account, um, you know, if you have a sample app that you wanted to share with people, you know, doing that through your sure. own um, uh, Git repositories would be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Okay, Doug. All right. Um, and then, Todd, what about the July planning? Where do we land with that? 
Yeah, so July um, is going to be the week of July 25th, uh, was when most people are available. Uh, we're just finalizing space on that. So potentially we can look at something mm -hmm. uh, on the peninsula or San Jose at a at a member company. Uh, one of the other options is the Linux Foundation has an office in San Francisco, um, and we could rent out some conference space uh, adjacent to that. Uh, it's in the Presidio near the Golden Gate Bridge, um, and there would be a small cost associated with that. Um, so just evaluating both of those options right now to see potentially what's available from any of the companies on this call. Otherwise, we could um, lock down in the, the San Francisco office. Okay. Let, let me know where you land with that because, I mean, IBM has offices in Foster City. We may be able to sort of get some space there. Okay. Um, and then um, we also have uh, in South San Jose, of course, that's out in the boonies, but <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll have space there. I'll, I'll connect with you on offline on that. Uh, and then the last okay. thing, uh, looking at a monthly cadence um, for having these technical face-to-face -face meetings um, for the August time frame, one of the things that could line up nicely is LinuxCon North America. It takes place in Toronto. It's going to be the week of August twenty-second, um, so that could be a good time frame and location. To get people together it's not too far from where everyone is where many people are in new york already uh and it would also give the opportunity to draw in uh some other people into the hyperledger project um by co-locating there so just yeah. gauging general that's, interest on that yeah that's a great thought, that's uh, a great thought. I, I i think it would it would be a bit too close to the july one uh, probably it will target another audience then at least at least for those uh, traveling to to the Bay Area, um, I'd like to uh, suggest uh, that we we already plan for a meeting in autumn, somewhere in September, and it preferably would be in Europe. What's the opinion on that? So there was a, a series of notes, Todd. Um, where somebody was suggesting, and I thought it was October, or maybe it just said Q3, I can't remember now. Is there some sort of a, um, a blockchain conference in Europe in September, October, something like that? I thought it was consensus, but I couldn't find anything um, like consensus EU or something like that. And I couldn't find anything in Google, so I wasn't sure if it's a real thing or not, but somebody was suggesting we could have one uh, around that time period, and, and I think maybe it was maybe an AMRO that was offering to host. I can't, can't recall, Todd. Uh, yeah, so I uh, chatted with them actually at the face to face, and it sounds like they could be interested in in hosting that. Uh, I think uh, CBOS or CYBOS um, is a conference in, I think it's October. I can I check. I think that's the end of September. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, September 26th to 29th in Geneva. Yes. Um, we could think about that. Maybe that's what they were referring to. Yeah, and that could line up nicely. I know uh, the Hyperledger Project, the marketing committee, is uh, looking to have a physical presence at that event um, yeah. already. And so aligning something on a technical front could make a lot of sense. Yep. Okay. So, Tomas, I think I, 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 I hear you. I feel your pain just having gone to Barcelona for two days. <laughs> I'm still jet lagged. I have no idea what time zone I'm in anymore. Um, and so I, I, I feel your pain having to travel internationally so frequently. Um, um, I don't know. What, what do others think? Do we want to try and go alternate virtuals and and face to face and have one around Cybos instead of August. Actually, a lot of people also take holiday in August, so it may just end up not being very practical to get together for face to face.
touch. Chris, I think we should uh, see how the virtual hackathon goes and then probably see if the virtual hackathon makes sense. Let's, let's put it this way. Is anybody who would be opposed to doing alternating virtual and face-to-face, -face, as I just described? I'm not hearing any. Okay. Um, all right, Todd, let's work on that assumption, and let's see if we can, uh, and especially since it is, you know, going to be, uh, for, for many people, It'll be good, obviously, if it's in Geneva, that's pretty close for Tomas and some of the others that are in Europe. Um, and, uh, and we can maybe start playing and, and thinking about who and, and where and how we would get hosting facilities somewhere proximate to that conference. Perfect. Sounds good. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then, Todd point here was uh, immersion into Garrett, so um, I think Rai and the team are going to be giving a, a course on how to use Garrett next week. Uh, yeah, that actually took place earlier this week. Uh, we did a recording oh, for this it. Week. Yeah, <laughs> so, no problem. We did a recording of that that's posted to the TSC wiki, so anyone that wasn't able to participate, uh, please go check that out. If you have any follow-up questions from that um, or want to connect up with Rai, just shoot us a note and we'll We'll get you taken care of, no problem. Thanks. <laughs> I've been in a time warp. Uh, okay, so so much for action item reviews. Uh, updates, Oleg. I think I saw you on. You want to give us an update on the requirements? Um, yes, I'm here. Good morning. Morning. Just kidding. Um, yes, we had a, a productive meeting um, two weeks ago, and um, this Monday. Um, Jeremy Severi uh, uh, presented delivery versus payment, which is a fundamental use case that will uh, um, that will work for uh, financial transactions and uh, for real estate transactions. Anything, um, any use case where money um, is exchanged atomically with in the same atomic transaction with uh, underlying asset. Um, so we also discussed and uh, voted to uh, simplify a use case template um, to uh, limit it to user stories only. Uh, and we believe that will um, help us and um, other members of the project or uh, uh, experts from the outside to enter more use cases. The idea is to uh, keep the uh, use case uh, page or use case document to uh, user stories only and um, um, requirements from, um, from the user's point of view, basically to omit any implementation details such as uh, states, transitions, um, and so on. Um, another proposal was made to um, add um, an identity matrix to every use case document so that we can uh, compare them and see uh, what the uh, identity or privacy requirements are for each use case. Uh, because we can um, really put a matrix to every use case whether we need to uh, allow to see uh, the payload of our, a smart contract or the contract code itself. Uh, whether we can or not allow the uh, caller identity to be seen or the ledger data to be seen. Um, so that's uh, that's where we are for the group. Super, thanks. Um, where's my agenda? Um, Ron. Yes, uh, so we did uh, meet this, uh, uh, this past Wednesday, yesterday, uh, on the architecture work group. Um, um, the IBM team, Marco uh, and team, have put together um, uh, a very thorough documentation of their proposal for the next generation of consensus, and that was the uh, main uh, focus of our discussion um, yesterday. Um, so we um, uh, had a very good uh, discussion around it, and uh, we are still um, in the midst of it. Um, so we're going to continue that. Uh, I think uh, your suggestion about trying to have an off-cycle session next week during the hackathon would be a good one. So I'll send out a doodle poll to see whether we can find some time um, 
uh, Wednesday through Friday to have one more session before our next one the week after. Um, so um, I think we're making good progress in identifying alternate uh, mechanisms to uh, the previous model uh, in terms of separating, separating out uh, the validation uh, or quote-unquote endorsement from the consensus uh, uh, layers, if you will. And so we still need uh, some amount of discussion to tease out the pros and cons of the approaches there. Uh, but I think we're making good progress. Great. Thanks. Any questions for Ron? And David. Hi, yes. Yeah. So um, we also had our uh, working group meeting yesterday. And um, uh, we've updated our uh, working, the white paper working group wiki. If you take a look there now, you'll see there is a uh, a draft version 1.0.0 uh, available, and um, also you know kind of restructured the page a little bit. So as soon as you hit the, the white paper working group, you'll you'll see that first thing. And um, we're, we've also uh, added a link there so you can view the feedback submissions. And uh, you know just a, a quick comment on on feedback submissions. If you click on the link, you'll see our last feedback submission was. Let me click on it and take a look. Uh, May 25th, where we had one. So, um, uh, so we we would we are definitely looking for more feedback. Um, you know, the the what what you'll find in the draft version 1.0.0. Um, you know, we we had spent the last two weeks going through Richard's comments uh, feedback. Um, which you know he put a lot of effort into. We really appreciate that, and uh, and so you know we haven't we didn't necessarily necessarily agree with every comment in there, um, but the the vision section was uh, uh, redone, and you know Hart played a, a major role in that one. Thank you, Hart. Uh, we 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 definitely think that you know this is important for people to read through and uh, comment on because you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of room for varying visions on things, <laughs> and uh, we, you know we can definitely see how this this white paper could become a proxy to for you know discussions of some some pretty fundamental things about what we're doing. Um, but anyways, the, the the draft is out there, um, and uh, people are able to see you know what feedback submissions have been made. Uh, mm -hmm. We. The, the feedback form is is a little bit more prominent there. It would be great to have the TSC members provide some feedback. Uh, we may want to, you know, next week, for example, take a vote to say, you know, is this ready now to, to be more prominently put on uh, the hyper.org, hyperledger.org, um, you know, main page to to ask people to or to direct them to 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 see what. Uh, a little bit more detail about what we're all about. Um, so, but before we do that, we think it would be great to make sure that everyone has read through it, considered what's in there, and uh, and and whether they're comfortable with it being representative of, of what our whole sort of mission and objectives mm -hmm. are around this. And uh, yeah, and just you know, uh, further updates were, were provided in the minutes in, in the status section there. Um, there, there was just, uh, you know, we think we we moved all, we have removed all the vestiges of OBC from the white paper. Um, you know, I think some of the comments that Richard made uh, on that were related to the fact that he he took a snapshot just before it looks like, you know, after we made the link available, but before we we put the the, the new diagrams in there. So I think, you know, with those new diagrams in there, and if you read through the architecture, you'll it, you, you, we hope people will find it generic enough that it isn't just talking about one one implementation. And and though the word fabric appears throughout the paper, um, you know, and I know that I guess the IBM code base now we're calling fabric. We're using fabric with a little f, <laughs> and uh, and you know fabric is has been used a lot in, in computer science, particularly in COG. Uh, most recently, you know, it kind of represents nodes and links, and so you know, we think we can still use the word fabric without that being tied specifically to the uh, OBC um, 
code base. But uh, if people have differing opinions, you know, let us know, um, and we and we've got some mechanism in, in there uh, for that feedback. And I think that's it. Unless anyone else on the team wants to bring up anything I I missed. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah so I can imagine a fabric term could cause some confusion. Might be good to find another term to fit in there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so I, I would encourage everybody that's on the TSC to actually do a, a thorough review um, and um, you know provide any specific feedback, including me. <laughs> it's been on my list of things that I need to do. I really need to do it. So um, yeah, I, I would definitely strongly encourage everybody to give it a once over and um, and David maybe it would be good to actually have as part of the hackathon next week not so much a, a white paper um, work group meeting but a, a, we can actually use maybe that time since you met this week um, to to have sort of office hours to have a, an open discussion about the paper yeah that, that's a great point um, <clears throat> absolutely uh, the, the, just the one other point, you know, that we talked about, you know, though we have the form available, you know, what uh, what Richard did also is, was was very effective. You know, he saved a, a Word version of it, put his comments in there. So, you know, if people want to do that and, and email it, you know, we're, we will certainly consider that as well. So we, we don't want to force people into going through the feedback submission form. Um, if, if you're if if, if it'd be more comfortable to uh, to do that, that would be great. But also, you know, it would be if if you have some specific thoughts around a section, if you don't really agree with it, give us a suggestion. How would you like to replace uh, that the the verbiage? Um, so you know, we'll put a little bit more on people to if they find a you know something that they are objecting with a little bit. Uh, let us know how they want to phrase it, and, and that would be a good way to help us understand specifically what they're looking for. Um, but yeah, I think that would be terrific um, if if, uh, if if we could, you know, get people office hours type of thing for just general discussion. That would be uh, very welcome. Cool. All right. Thanks. Any other questions for David? All right. Chris is not on, I believe, is still the case. I don't see him. Um, so we'll skip identity, um, and they'll be meeting next week. Um, and so CI. So I, like I said, I was traveling all day yesterday, sitting on a plane with no Wi-Fi. Um, and uh, and I, I got back, and I just happened to check Slack, and I, I noted that uh, there was a couple of comments that, um, Jenkins is now working for the fabric on both um, X and Z, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if I saw power in that mix or not, but um, if that's the case, oh my god, awesome. Um, and so I'd really like to extend my thanks to um, uh, to Trevor and, and Rye and, and uh, Ramesh and a few others that were helping in getting all that up and running. It's a great piece of work. Um, and so then I guess we have to, uh, again, I have a whole lot of catch up to do in that regard, so I'm not exactly sure where we are, whether we've ported over all the actual build um, or whether that was just that we were able to get a slave spun up on those different um, platforms, uh, but whichever, it's still, I think it's still notably good progress. Uh, so if we had the Garrett <laughs> that I need to then listen to, um, then the other thing that I'd like to do with um, with both projects, both top level projects, would be to um, to, to start working with you know the various um, uh, the maintainers on you know setting up planning for uh, transition over to using Garrett. And again, I think the important thing. And uh, you know, for, for the important reason for using Garrett is to get um, really persnickety about reviews, and you know, actually, we're able to sort of also enforce a number of other checks 
um, by using Garrett in connection with uh, Jenkins um, because the Linux Foundation has a number of um, a number of bots that can do things like ensure that there's a um, you know a sign off for the DCO that we can uh, break down the testing uh, into multiple checks uh, that each are able to sort of give a, a plus one. Um, and then we can also enforce multiple reviews um, so that actually you can have it so that two maintainers have to agree. And I think this is important because when we're dealing with software of the nature that we're producing, I think it's going to be really important that um, we're very cautious about code that gets in, that it's been thoroughly reviewed, that it's thoroughly tested, that it's, you know, uh, had at least two sets of eyes on it and hopefully more. Um, I think this is something that, you know, teams are using to great effect on other Linux Foundation projects, OpenStack and a few other notable projects that require extensive review before merging any code. So, um, so I think we'd want to start seeing sort of planning towards how do we transition over the code <clears throat> uh, to be under Garrett um, and, uh, you know, setting dates for when we'll do that so that we can also get uh, planning for Trevor and Rye and others to, to help on that. Um, and so that's it from a CI perspective. And I think that's, that's all she wrote. Chris, may I add something? Oh, uh, yes. Um, I, I feel the need of, uh, of a meeting with uh, the maintainers or those who are uh, directly interested in reviewing pull requests uh, in the mm -hmm. code. Uh, because I think these TSC meetings are really a bit more high level governance type yeah. of decisions that we make, but we really need to find a forum to find decisions on very technical matters. Yes. Uh, so going, going through pull requests and discussing them. Yeah, so Ben was, uh, had set that up. Unfortunately, I think um, his laptop blew up <laughs> on Sunday. And so he was unable to have a call this week, but he was, uh, you know, and we had one, uh, I think, two weeks ago, and then last, uh, the week before, um, uh, it was a holiday in the U.S., and so we didn't have uh, a call. But I think there is supposed to be, for the Fabric project anyway, there's supposed to be a maintainers meeting. Actually, it's a project meeting, and, you know, the maintainers are expected to attend, and anyone else can attend um, on Mondays, yeah, 10 a.m. Thanks, Todd. Um, and so I think that would be the intention for um, uh, for that. I, I would, uh, and, and again, I, I, I noted with you guys on Slack that we also have to start planning for, um, uh, you know, being able to cut a release. I'm not saying for a 1.0, but certainly we need to start working towards that. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you agree. Um, and so that's just a matter of getting everybody together at a regular time and having that conversation. Um, so okay. I, uh, well, I, I I knew these meetings. I participated in, in the two that happened. Yeah. Um, I, I think yeah, it would probably make sense to announce them uh, that they have this specific scope of reviewing yeah. reviewing outstanding pull requests, for example. Yeah. I think that would be uh, a useful topic. Yep. Okay. Um, and I think I saw Ben on, so Ben, I, I hope you agree. Okay, maybe I'm mute. Okay. Any other comments? Any other topics people would like to cover? If not, everybody gets 25 minutes back. And thank you, and we'll uh, hopefully see many of you uh, online next week during the virtual hackathon. Um, really looking forward to that. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Chris. Thanks.